What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Elliot Wilson is here with me. Yeah, yeah. Or as Nicki Minaj calls you, Idiot Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to make sure, though, that we respect Elliot Wilson as far as his background and where he came from, and also the fact that you're in the news to this day. <laughs> oh, man, I got to get out the news, man. Uh, for your opinions. But I also saw, well, first of all, your birthday's coming up, so happy early goat birthday. Thank you, Yee. Capricorn um, season. Capricorn season. So now for El- Elliot, people who don't know, right? Where would you say the Elliot Wilson story began as far as journalism? Uh, early 90s and then the Source era, then XXL, then a Rap Radar. He Rap Radar podcast right now. So, you know, been out here for a minute. Yeah, you've been out here moving. Yep. Um, and I saw the other day you posted when you got fired as editor-in-chief yeah, of Yeah, that was 16 XXL. years ago. That was a big day in the hip-hop media back then <laughs> when people used to buy magazines. Now, how did you feel <laughs> that day? And did a lot of people reach out to you? Do you feel like, because journalism can sometimes be a thankless uh, job. That yeah, you- and I was I was viewed as being like the top editor on top of the mountain. Like, how is this guy going to get fired? And then um, Why did you get fired? Uh, well, the first time advertising was down. It was the first time advertising was down. Like the whole hip hop clothing line stuff was there, mm-hmm. and I was due for another big increase. And I just felt like uh, they felt like, well, if we cut the big guy down, we could save some money, right? Um, and they could kind of move on without me because I kind of built ourselves to be number one in the marketplace. So it just came down to money and business at the end of the day. And you were not breaking on what you wanted to get, <laughs> but I remember <laughs> like I remember being home in Brooklyn. I just got a place in Brooklyn. I was drinking wine, you know, drinking bottles of wine, bottles of wine. And I was like refreshing, like the early days of the internet. And I'm like the number one story on all hip hop and S O H H. Ellie Wilson fired. Those were the two hip hop sites we had. <laughs> all hip hop and S O H H. So. But that's some power though, right there, to know that you getting fired was like a top story. It was at the time. You know, hip hop media is all cool now. All the rappers are hip hop media, so hip hop. But it's also not easy now. to so publicly get fired no it was hard it was amazing it was amazingly brutal but i got through it and uh it ended up being the right decision because the game was moving more towards the internet and digital and print was starting to die like when i was still at print we still were selling magazines but the handwriting was on the wall Mm -hmm. that it was going to slowly decrease and so seeing that everything was moving towards the internet rap radar started yeah he was a big part of that in the beginning and he supported (laughs) us a lot come to the office and bother us and I would definitely Take over do some our website. things. So Rap Radar, um, that was you, and Paul Rosenberg had a hand in that yeah, as well. Yeah, Paul's my partner, business partner, and then we hired the incredible Brian B. Dot Miller, and me and B. Dot pretty much built the site from 2009 on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so now, then you guys had the podcast as well. Yes, and B- I credit like- B. Dot. B. Dot was the one that's saying we should do a podcast, and at first I was like, I don't know, Combat Jack, I'm cool with him, I don't want to look like I'm trying to be in his lane. But then B-Dot was adamant about we should do a podcast, and he finally convinced me. So a lot of credit goes to B-Dot. Yeah, and this is a lot about evolution and changing with the times because we see so many things happening from the beginning of your career where print was where it was at, yep. right? And then moving, like you said, onto the Internet, then moving into the world of podcasting. And you also had a whole Elliot Wilson experience, yeah, too. Yeah, still on Patreon, some original content over there. But, yeah, even social media. Like, I was the first to kind of really – kind of document culture through social media, through Twitter, through Instagram and things like that. And it helped Rap Radar as a website grow and get bigger. And in addition to that, most recently you've been in the news for some controversial <laughs> things. So I want to get your take on it because you did have some things to say about Nicki Minaj's interview, her live stream with, with Kai Sinat. Kai so. Sinat. Yeah, I put a picture up and I wrote hip-hop journalism. I have this bad habit of calling things out when I don't feel like there's a balance where you know, people don't feel like they have to go to traditional media anymore. They're going to go to these streamers because they have huge audiences and don't really want to have a sit down for like a real formal interview. So sometimes I get a little in my defensive bag when I don't get the interview. I thought I was going to get another Nicki Minaj crown. So I put that up and I wrote hip hop journalism and everybody went crazy on the internet. And, um, um, I eventually apologized to Kai because, you know, I didn't like the optics of it. Like his mother and, you know, if you watch the stream, his mother and his sister are big fans of her. And it was a real genuine moment there, and Mm -hmm. I kind of stepped on that. So I was wrong for that. And I saw her mother on Twitter and stuff kind of getting at me a little bit. And I was like, you know what, Odie, I'm an apology. You know, and a family apology, you know. But, you know, that's just pretty much was, was, you know, just me kind of feeling like I lost out in the interview. And catching my feelings a little and bit. And Nikki's on that. like, I did give you a crown before, <laughs> Elliot. And if you would have reached out to the team, I did reach out to the team. And Nikki, as building this false narrative that I've said negative things about her, that I've done, that I've. Uh, retweeted things about her negative. I've said nothing negative about her. I've said she's the greatest female rapper of all time. I've said I've given her more praise than anybody has. I think she's the greatest above everybody that came before her. 
I also did support Cardi B, and I feel like you're not allowed to support Cardi B and Nicki Minaj at the same time. They can't so, coexist. They can't coexist. And, but, and your support. But I do think still, like, you know, because I, I said also Nicki's the GOAT and Cardi's the best right now, but I feel like Nicki's kind of reclaimed the best right now crown to me because I liked her new album a lot. I think it's one of the best albums last year. And um, she definitely puts up the numbers, too. Yeah, so I think she's the GOAT and she's the best in female rap. But, you know, I, it was crazy that, you know, the apology <laughs> with Kai went so nuts, but... I never seen a rapper go so crazy on a journalist. Like she went on me like four minutes on the internet. Where, where's my feel, protection, man? Like, how did she, you feel when that happened? She told did me you to, think it was funny? Did it hurt your feelings at all? I was shocked. I was, I was scared of what she was gonna say next. I'm watching it like a horror <laughs> film. I'm like, I don't know what's going she on. She has something to say about your laugh. Yes, the laugh. She don't like my laugh. Yeah, and, I thought she liked my laugh. All right. She also called you idiot Wilson, which I love, by the way. I don't think you know. I was saying I don't think anyone's ever called me idiot Wilson. I got Elliot Smelly it a lot as a kid. She called me <laughs> Smelly it at first, but okay. She told me to pop something I won't even say because we're yeah. not on lip service. You're bussy. Hey, hey, easy, easy. <laughs> I don't even know what that. Is. I don't even know what that was. You should have called me. I had to go look it up. Look, we're, Elliot's going to be joining us until <laughs> Thursday, so we'll have some more um, idiot Wilson moments. Uh, for but you, you know, guys. and then Fifty jumped in. So it was like, I'm from Woodside, Queens. They're from Southside. I felt like Southside, Queens jumped me and stuff, man. Woodside, Queens took the, the L. <laughs> all right. Well, look, and I like how you took it all in stride, though. And I think that's all you can do. Yo, you know? absolutely. Because I have, I have great respect for Nikki. I don't want no problems with Nikki. I, again, I think she, I know I know how great she is. And the barbs so know where you live. we can resolve it. The barbs are vicious. <laughs> I love y'all. And I'm still the only one that brought them to the barbs. I'm the only one that brought your hero to you. Like, I did two live crown events in front of the barbs. And faced you guys face to face. No one else has ever done that. Hopefully one day we could do it again. Third time's a charm. I don't know. It's over for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Never Elliot give up Wilson, hope. Never Elliot. give up, E. <laughs> All right. And when we come back, like we said, Elliot will be here till Thursday. But, of course, you guys get to have the last word when we come back. 800-292-5150 is way up. Way up.